So first principles here, uh, individual treatment plans are, are critical in making this all work. We have to know something about our patient's history of non-adherence, uh, history of response, and the patient preferences as what they would like. And that'll get into our switching decision. It's not always so easy. We need to work uh, together collaboratively, of course, with patients and caregivers and other staff. So here's the motivational interviewing rule acronym. Rule, resist making too many suggestions. Wait a minute, that's not remember their name. No, it's not. Resist making suggestions, okay. Yeah, so here, resistance is not futile. Yeah, that's good. No, point. resist making too many suggestions. Understand the patient's motivation. Listen with a patient-centered empathic approach and E for empower the patient. I have to remember rule every time I talk to people because the natural human tendency is to tell them what to do. Yeah. But that doesn't work in medicine. Yeah. It doesn't work in relationships either, as I've <laughs> discovered. You need to take into account other people's motivation, readiness for change, and identify goals that they can buy into. You know, I sometimes say to be a good clinician is to be curious less, and if you really listen and ask questions, I think people will tell you more and they feel that you care. Yeah. Some things about side effects need to be considered. It's the level of distress that drives adherence behaviors. Yeah. If they don't care about something, it really doesn't matter. Right. But they may also have some concern about side effects that can't possibly exist in real life, like my teeth itch. <laughs> well, if their teeth itches, it's game over, right? Mm -hmm. So their reality becomes your reality, and you'll have to adjust or pivot accordingly. But for the most part, you're going to hear about the same things over and over again. As you know, weight gain, sedation, akathisia, sexual dysfunction, Parkinsonism, cognitive problems, yeah. and so on. Those are the deal breakers. Those are, are the big ones. Yeah. So the next step, well, we'll use motivational interviewing if the patient's not willing to take their medicine. But for the most part, they are willing to take once they buy into it and they need some help here. Yep. So pill boxes can be helpful, self-monitoring yep. tools or reminders can be helpful, and then of course, long-acting injectables yep. that offer guaranteed delivery can be extremely helpful.